Britain, known for its great food, sun-kissed beaches and cheeky monkeys. Didn't expect me to say that, right? That's because I'm talking about a specific British territory, Gibraltar, also simply known as The Rock, due to its imposing limestone mountain. It is a tiny peninsula that is attached to the Spanish mainland. What makes Gibraltar special is its geography, being situated at the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea, fittingly named the Strait of Gibraltar. Today, this small British territory is an important military base and a regional center of trade and finance and has been in British possession for over 300 years now. But before that, it was part of Spain and Spain wants it back. The dispute over Gibraltar still creates tensions between these two NATO allies, most recently due to Brexit, whose outcome will heavily impact the lives of the people living in both Gibraltar and the neighboring Spanish towns. But how did Britain get this territory on the south side of Iberia? Why are both Britain and Spain so adamant about their rights to owning Gibraltar? And could a satisfying solution ever be found? As usual, we'll find some answers when first exploring the history of this peninsula. Gibraltar has long been considered a special location. The ancient Greeks, for instance, worshipped here and believed it to be one of the two pillars of Hercules, which formed the gate to the end of the then known world. But the peninsula would get its modern name much later in the 8th century, when a Muslim army from North Africa, led by Tariq bin Ziyad, landed here. From then on, it was known as Jabal Tariq, meaning Tariq's mountain, which later became Gibraltar. Muslim forces would go on to conquer much of Iberia, while Gibraltar became an important fortification and settlement. Yet eventually, the resurgent Christian kingdoms in the north began driving the Muslims back in numerous campaigns, which collectively became known as the Reconquista. Much like a BMW in the Balkans, the peninsula often changed hands during this time, until 1462 when the Kingdom of Castile took Gibraltar for a final time. And as Muslim rule in Iberia came to an end just 30 years later, and the kingdoms of Castile and Aragon united into Spain, the strategic importance of Gibraltar declined and its upkeep was neglected. Nonetheless, it retained its symbolic value as a key fortification in the region. Castilian Queen Isabella was said to be particularly fond of Gibraltar's beauty. She gave it its coat of arms, and in her testament she requested that control over Gibraltar would never, ever be relinquished by her successors. Oops, I guess. Spanish rule over Gibraltar would last about 250 years until the Spanish succession crisis broke out. To keep it short, the slightly inbred King of Spain died without an heir in 1700, but just before dying he offered the Spanish throne to a French relative of his. This would have closely allied two of Europe's greatest powers, which made a lot of people angry, including Britain. So one year later, a war started about who was to rule Spain. As part of this war, a British-Dutch force conquered Gibraltar in 1704 and quickly fortified their positions on the peninsula. This, combined with their naval superiority and Gibraltar's defensive geography, made it impossible for Franco-Spanish forces to retake the territory. The war finally ended in 1713 with the Peace Treaty of Utrecht, in which Spain agreed to cede Gibraltar to Britain forever. What territory it exactly ceded is still heavily debated today. From the Spanish point of view, only the town and the main fortification were ceded, while the British argue that the fortifications also included some territory and minor structures further north. In any case, the vast majority of the local Spanish population left after the British took over. In their stead, new inhabitants from across the Mediterranean would settle in Gibraltar and later on from the wider British Empire. But while Gibraltar was now in British hands, Spain had little desire to leave them there. Between 1713 and 1807, Spain made numerous attempts to regain Gibraltar, diplomatically and with force, which all ultimately failed. The situation somewhat changed in 1808, when the Spanish rebelled against Napoleon and found themselves on the same side as the British. After Napoleon's defeat, British-Spanish relations somewhat improved, but the issue of Gibraltar remained. In 1909, the British began the construction of a border fence, which included the disputed territory and Spain didn't like that at all. However, it was in no position to challenge Britain and grew more unstable with every year. This disputed area would be used by the British to construct a runway in 1938, as the Spanish Civil War was coming to an end, which upset the Spanish even further. And I get it, just last week the British built a runway in my own backyard, but I found a way to deal with that by playing this video's sponsor Warfunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Whenever a British bayonet is poking me in the back, 
I like to distract myself by playing War Thunder with its more than 2000 highly detailed tanks, ships and planes. War Thunder's fun and immersive PvP battles make me forget that I'm getting colonized as I speak. The incredible detail of War Thunder vehicles not only provides an immersive combat experience but also calms my nerves as all my belongings are sent to the British Museum. At least my vehicles in War Thunder are safe which span over 100 years of development. War Thunder offers fantastic graphics and detail in 4K resolution and authentic sound effects which create a fully immersive atmosphere that I seriously need right now. And the best thing, you can download it for free for PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 or the previous console generations. And by using my link below, you'll get a free bonus pack as well. Thanks to Warfunder for sponsoring this video and now back to Gibraltar. Once the Spanish Civil War ended with Nationalist General Francisco Franco coming into power in 1939, regaining Gibraltar became one of his personal priorities. During World War II, the Axis powers offered to help retake Gibraltar if Franco was to support them, however, he ultimately declined. Franco believed that once the war was over, Britain would be in a catastrophic economic position and would simply abandon Gibraltar. But as it became clear that this would not happen, he changed his approach. Firstly, he began implementing measures to isolate the peninsula from Spain and fully close the border in 1969. Secondly, Franco sought international backing, especially from the United Nations, which supported the idea of negotiations between London and Madrid to find a solution, as the organization considers Gibraltar to be a non-self-governing territory that needs to be decolonized. But the British were not very keen on this and instead argued that it was up to the Gibraltarians to decide their future. To press this point, they began giving Gibraltar more autonomy and organized a referendum in 1967, in which the locals overwhelmingly voted to stay with Britain. This vote was seen as a farce in Spain, as Franco argued that the modern Gibraltarians were not native to the land and were instead brought there by Britain, so of course they would vote in favor of London. As you can imagine, little progress was made during the rest of Franco's reign. The dialogue over Gibraltar would only start to improve after his death in 1975 and the transition of Spain into a democracy. A few years later, Britain and Spain signed the Lisbon Agreement, in which both sides committed themselves to peaceful negotiations while Spain began integrating into Western political structures like the European communities and NATO. This began a new period for Gibraltar, characterized by growing economic ties with Spain after the borders opened again in 1982. But things looked different politically. Little actual progress was made in solving the dispute, despite the fact that Spain and Britain agreed to regularly meet and discuss the issue through what is called the Brussels Process. It also didn't help that in 1982, Argentina decided to invade the Falkland Islands in their own territorial conflict with Britain, something I also made a video about. The Falklands War made the British public very opposed to conceding territory, but they weren't the only ones. The Gibraltarians themselves also strongly disliked any negotiations about sovereignty and regularly boycotted and protested meetings. To further emphasize their desire to stay with Britain and not be viewed as a colony, Gibraltar adopted a new constitution in 2006, which further increased its autonomy and modernized its relationship with the UK. Spain was not particularly happy through all of that, and although the conflict remained peaceful, it was not without its controversies. Like in 2001, when the presence of a damaged British nuclear submarine caused an uproar over potential risks in Spain, or in 2013, when the Gibraltarians used concrete blocks to create an artificial reef, which angered Spanish officials who argued that this was detrimental to their fishers. The dispute entered a new chapter in 2016, when Britain voted to leave the European Union. This created a wide array of problems for the territory, since it's closely intertwined with the neighboring Spanish town of La Linea de la Concepcion, and despite years of negotiations, there is still no agreement on how the Gibraltarian relationship with the European Union will look like. Due to this, there are concerns that the Spanish could at some point use the leverage in these negotiations to put pressure on Britain to compromise. But if this dispute creates so many problems, why is it so difficult to find a solution? Well, what makes Gibraltar even more complicated is that it's actually three disputes in one. Firstly, about Gibraltar as a whole, as Spain seeks to regain the entire peninsula as it has significant symbolic value for the country that is even expressed on its flag. Secondly, about this territory here, where nowadays the Gibraltarian airport is located. According to Spain, this territory was never ceded in the Peace of Utrecht and was illegally absorbed by the British over the last two centuries. And thirdly, about the issue of land reclamation. Over the past 200 years, Britain has successfully expanded the land area of Gibraltar, which according to Spain, shifts the maritime boundaries and is illegal. Considering this complexity, is there even any hope of finding a compromise? Well, maybe. Until recently, there were only two options. 
either Gibraltar stays British or it's transferred to Spain, perhaps with a subsequent lease to Britain. But in the 1990s, another option gained support, joint sovereignty over Gibraltar. Seeing two states share territory is pretty rare, but there are examples. Spain itself shares a tiny border island with France, known as Pheasant Island, which changes hands every six months. But the island is tiny and unpopulated, so sharing causes little issues. Gibraltar, on the other hand, is densely populated with significant strategic and financial value. Finding a sharing agreement that works here is much harder, and there are many questions that need to be answered, like who gets to control what institution, who decides its foreign policy, and how do you resolve disagreements, the list goes on. But there is also another factor that makes finding a compromise difficult, namely the will of the Gibraltarians themselves. In 2002, they organized a referendum on shared sovereignty against the will of London and they overwhelmingly rejected it. To understand why Gibraltarians are so against concessions to Spain, one has to consider that Gibraltar has been British for longer than it has been Spanish, and more than 300 years of British rule didn't go by without consequences. For one, it created a unique and distinct Gibraltarian identity that is a blend of Spanish, British, Italian and many other cultures. For another, it also forged a strong historic bond with the United Kingdom through centuries of wars and hardships, and the Gibraltarians do not want to give that up. At the same time, Spanish policies towards Gibraltar didn't really build sympathies towards Madrid either. Especially during Franco's reign, Spain was seen as a threat and bully, but even today tensions persist. In 2023, both sides toughened their border controls to the dismay of the locals, crossed the border regularly. And that's only one of the many small mutual provocations both sides have levied against each other over the past years. This shows that if Spain wants to eventually reach a compromise with Britain that is also accepted by the Gibraltarians, it will need to significantly improve its relationship with them. And that's no simple task and will take a while. So Spain will inevitably have to play the long game. After hearing all this you might be wondering, couldn't these problems all be avoided if Gibraltar simply became independent? That's likely not a viable option either. The Treaty of Utrecht which gave Gibraltar to Britain states that if Britain should ever decide to renounce the territory, it will have to ask Spain first if it wants it back. But even if Britain and Gibraltar would decide that they are not bound by this more than 300 year old treaty, full independence would make Gibraltar even more vulnerable to Spanish pressure and break its ties with Britain, which is something Gibraltarians do not want. One could say that Gibraltar represents an unusual form of a frozen conflict. One that despite the occasional controversy has remained peaceful since modern times, but nonetheless seems almost impossible to resolve. At least for the foreseeable future, it looks like that the rock will remain British. That is bloody lovely. Thanks to Warfonder for sponsoring this video and don't forget to check out the link below. Also a big thank you to all my patrons and channel members, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, consider becoming a patron or channel member as well. I'll see you in the next one, bye.